Thanks, but you just, you just cost me 10 seconds, you know that. Okay, so I have 15 minutes, so no matter what I say, it's not going to be good enough. I accept that already. That's no problem. Um, what I do have to try to instill in you is an interest to come to a boff later on this evening. That is where I want to get your feedback. 15 minutes only gives me barely a chance to tell you a little bit about what I want to tell you, but it doesn't give me the, um, the chance to hear what you have to say about it. So please, we have a Java EE.express boff tonight. I'm doing it together with uh, Marcus Eisel. Please come to that. There's Marcus over there. Please come to that, and that's your opportunity to tell me everything, and I want to hear everything. True? All true. Okay, so what is the motivation for this? The motivation is simply people that have come and asked for these features. People like yourselves and many others all around the world who say, why isn't there any way to configure my application externally from my Java E um, ear file? So people have a deployment, they deploy the same ear multiple times, and they want to configure it differently for different environments. And that's essentially what this configuration um, is going to be um, fulfilling. This is uh, intended to be a JSR that will be coming around very shortly. As soon as we can get EE7 out the door, we'll be starting on the EE8 features. And this is going to be an EE8 feature. So this is the idea of getting the, the feedback from you and the, the requirements gathering. Secondly, uh, the script-based configuration deployment, people would like to be able to configure things based on scripting. You don't want to have the manual deployment tool. That will go so far. So, you know, we can only deliver so much there, but that is still a requirement that people have asked for. A, a profile, um, there are different features like this. There's a CDI has an alternative. Um, uh, J, JSF has uh, stages, I believe. There's these kinds of things that sit in, in different specs. We'd like to have a, a deployment profile to be uh, for all of Java EE. And environment properties. People have a hard time defining environment properties. You have to... It's a little bit difficult in the XML deployment descriptors right now to define and configure environment properties. And, um, and it's not very, uh, I would say it it's, it's probably doesn't meet the requirements of many people. There's no scope. Uh, it's just simply, here's an environment property. And so we'd like to make that a lot easier and a little more flexible um, so that you can do things at both an application level or even a global definement, uh, in property for, to define in, in your application. We, we also want to make sure that the configuration can be done through uh, injection. So when you have a configuration property that you've defined externally, I'd like to be able to access that configuration, so through CDI or something. And um, in addition, I would say these last three specifically are kind of a little more extravagant, a little more exotic in terms of requirements, but still things that I've heard from people. One is, well, I have configurations, I want to make sure that they're versioned, I want to be able to manage them and know which ones to apply and that this one is a change from that one. Um, I also want to be able to do multi-tenancy, so I'd like to be able to configure on a per-tenant basis. And so as I configure and I establish my configuration, I can add a configuration for this tenant without having to redeploy my application. And lastly, I'd like to be able to know from the application perspective when the configuration changes. I'd like to get some sort of notification or callback saying, oh, this configuration property has a new value. So you can act accordingly, respond to that configuration change. So this is a little bit more, I guess I said, more advanced, but all within the realm of possibility for what configuration can do. So the solution is that we add some kind of configuration facility. I call it a configuration service because it will provide a, a service of sorts, both from the application perspective and the deployer's perspective. We would have a configuration archive. I should take my watch off so that I can actually see. Wow. 15 minutes goes fast, doesn't it? I'm even speaking fast. Hopefully uh, you're understanding what I'm saying and I'm not slurring. But uh, um, at any rate, configuration is going to be deployed separately from the application. So you have a configuration archive that comes along after the fact, and that will contain all the configuration for that application, potentially for other applications. Um, you, have, you can name these, and the application itself will have a dependency on that configuration. So when you deploy the application, you say, oh, I need some configuration. So if I get deployed and the configuration doesn't exist, then I should fail deployment. The configuration should be there, right? So you have dependencies, and this is correct. And I've talked about injection. And you'd also like, 
You'd also like to have an API to be able to access that configuration from the application, the Java API. So I can look up properties or different resource definitions and be able to potentially even add them on the fly. So here's just a little bit of a flow to get, get you kind of understanding what I'm talking about. Here I have an application archive. It may be any, of, any kind of archive, an ear or a jar. And I have potentially an XML file in there, an application XML. And that application XML defines the application name as well as having a dependency on a configuration. You see there's a required configs in there. And I've said that I require myapp.config. There could be a namespace for configurations. A named configuration is myapp.config. Meanwhile, I'll have a bean in the application that has a data source that it requires, and it's going to inject that data source. And all it knows is that the configuration property for that data source is app.ds. And this data source is defined externally from the application. So I say add config app.ds, and I inject that into this. So I mean, this is just kind of speculation. I'm giving you an idea of how it could work. This doesn't exist, so please don't ask me afterwards. I want to get that code. I want to, I want to try it out. This is part of what we want to define. So this is kind of my vision of, of some ways that it can work. Meanwhile, I may have a persistence um, component of my application. I have a JPA persistence XML file. And in there, I've got a JTA data source. And that JTA data source has a JNDI name. And that JNDI name is Java Global JDBC My DS. Now, that DS, that data source might not exist. It's not defined. But I'm assuming, because I have a dependency on a configuration, that it will be defined and that it will exist. Furthermore, I've got a web app. I've got some servlet mapping here. And that servlet mapping has a variable in it. You'll see that it says uh, sign vendor. And the, the actual URL is going to be mapped to some variable URL. And the URL itself is not defined yet, right? How many, how many times have we wanted to set the URL after the fact based on some other parameter? So this, is, this would be something that would be possible. It would be bound at the time when the configuration is available, at deployment time. OK, now we come to the other side. How do we get the configuration in there? Well, we have an archive. It could be a standard jar file, or we could have a new extension called car for configuration archive. Whatever it is, it's going to be a, a kind of a jar file formatted thing. And it could have a configuration XML file in it, for example. And it might have something that names it. We talked about the name of the configuration. These are named. So we see the name myapp.config. We see the, the scope is global. That means that any application can access this configuration. And then we have a profile. So this is a configuration that's applicable to production applications. right? It's deployed in production mode. If we deployed an application in, in dev or testing mode, it wouldn't be able to see this configuration. right? So things like that. Furthermore, we have some properties. Um, the property that we saw in the previous slide, app.ds, has a data source. And it's being defined here in this XML snippet. This is just the standard XML snippet that you could add in an application XML file, except now it's in a configuration archive. And you see that it names it in Java Global JDBC My DS, where the persistence XML file expected it to be. And it has all the other uh, JDBC um, data source parameters and information specified in that entry. And then we have this vendor that we also expected in our servlet mapping for the URL. The vendor has a value of Acme, and so that will be the URL will be Acme. It'll fill in the vendor variable with Acme. Alternatively, we could also define a class that you could annotate with this information for people who don't like XML. You might say, well, I want to define a configuration in annotation form, and I have at configuration. I just have a configuration class that gets annotated. And then I specify as properties in that, in that configuration um, the data source, which we already have a definition for as well, and then configuration properties like the vendor. So you see there's a kind of dual, just like we do in all the other aspects of Java EE, you can do XML or annotation form. And I would deploy my configuration, first of all. And now, when my application gets to be deployed, well, first of all, I guess I should go through the workflow. When I, get, when I deploy the configuration, then the configuration service that exists, the, the container, will then parse and read that configuration, load it up, and then know about it so that it can use that configuration. Now when I go to deploy my application in the server, it has a dependency on the named configuration. 
the configuration service will then go and serve up that data to the application. And so when it gets injected with things, like we saw in the previous example of at config, it can supply that information, perhaps, or we could have the CDI container supplying it. The CDI container would get the information from the configuration service and use all those um, uh, properties and information that it obtains from there and be able to supply that to the application. So this is, this is really kind of, a, in a nutshell, uh, a way that you could get configuration separately deployed from an application. And you could have multiple applications that access same configurations, or you could have one application that accesses multiple configurations. Okay, so it's many to many. You could also have an API, and the API would be uh, a static one in that you could have a configuration service, and you say, get me the configuration with a given name, and you could access that configuration. Or you can say, just give me some global configuration property called X, and the configuration service would be able to serve that up to you. Or you could get the configuration, in the, as in, in the first example, get configuration, and then query that configuration, saying, well, what's the profile of this configuration? Um, what are the properties contained in this configuration? What's the scope? These kinds of things. And, and this is just a use, a use of it. Low. So instead of saying uh, the add inject case that I had earlier, I could actually, in my uh, class, my application being, I could, in my initialize, go and get that configuration property. So config service.get property, and the property is called vendor, and uh, it's just a, uh, it's a, it's a string class is the type. So I'm actually returning the type just based on that previous API call. You can see that, yeah, okay. Okay, so the things that I'm gonna be asking you, I'm, I've only got one more minute, I just wanna tell you the kinds of things that I wanna ask from you. Anything's up for, 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 I mean, you can tell me anything. I don't care what it is, I'll be happy to hear it. Um, but I wanna know if these kinds of things that you've seen here today uh, meet your need. If they, if they go far enough for what you have in mind or what you've experienced in the past in your own experience, or do you have some other use cases that, that are not met by this kinds of service? Um, particularly the dynamic configuration, um, OSGI provides a very dynamic configuration admin service, and some of the people who come from more dynamic environments have asked for this, but I want to know if it's more of a mainstream thing as well. Java E, by and large, is very static. So my expectation is that it's not something that is all that important in the first round, that we don't really need dynamics because it adds a level of complexity to the service that we probably don't need in the first round. But I'd like to know if, if this is the case. Um, what kind of tools support? I know I've, I've asked someone this and they, I was amazed the kind of tooling that people wanted for this and I, I don't see that the tooling will necessarily be a part of this JSR, but I would still be interested in, in knowing what kind of tooling you would expect and um, what kind of things would make your life easier in order to use this. And lastly, uh, again, uh, your experiences will tell me if there is something else, um, other kinds of problems that, that you've seen. So I'm out of time for now. Please, please, please come to the uh, talk, uh, the BOF tonight. And um, if you have any other questions about Java E, of course, uh, Marcus and myself will be happy to, to get the feedback as well um, about anything else in Java E. But I really want to hear you your input about this. Thanks very much, that's my time. <laughs>